The 1st of October, 1946, Nuremberg, Germany. After more than 10 months on trial, 21 defendants who are among the most important political, military, and economic leaders of Nazi Germany hear their sentences read. These high-ranking representatives of the criminal Nazi regime have to finally take responsibility for their crimes and answer before an international military tribunal who would punish them for unspeakable atrocities committed during the Second World War. It is only the first of many war crime trials held after the Second World War and would become a warning to war criminals and dictators everywhere. Once the true extent of the German atrocities, especially against Jews, are revealed, 12 defendants out of the 21 are sentenced to death by hanging. One of them is a German field marshal, Wilhelm Keitel. Wilhelm Keitel was born on the 22nd of September, 1882, in the village of Helmscherode, then part of the German Empire. His father was a landowner, and Wilhelm wanted to take over his estates. However, because his father did not want to retire, Wilhelm joined the Prussian army as an artillery officer in 1901. During the First World War, Keitel served on the Western Front as a battery commander and then staff officer. He was seriously wounded by a shrapnel grenade in Flanders in 1914. After recovering, thanks to his organizational skills, he served in the Army General Staff. Following World War I, the terms of the Treaty of Versailles reduced the Reichswehr, the German army, to 100,000 men. In 1924, Wilhelm Keitel was transferred to the Ministry of the Reichswehr in Berlin. Keitel, then a colonel, served in the Truppenamt, an agency which concealed the existence of the prescribed German Army General Staff. He played a crucial role in the German rearmament, as in this capacity, Keitel was responsible for secretly planning, reorganizing, and eventually enlarging the German Army in direct violation of the Treaty of Versailles. After the Nazis came into power in January 1933, Wilhelm Keitel became Hitler's loyal yes-man, willing to do everything that the Führer demanded of him. Keitel became known as blindingly loyal toady of Hitler, as his peers used to call him behind his back. In 1935, Wilhelm Keitel was appointed the head of the Armed Forces Office at the Reich Ministry of War, overseeing the Army, Navy and Air Force. After the Ministry of War was abolished in 1938, it was replaced by the Supreme Command of the Armed Forces, with Adolf Hitler becoming the Commander-in-Chief and Keitel its Chief of Staff. This came as a surprise not only to the General Staff, but also to Wilhelm Keitel himself, as everyone knew that he was not suitable for the job. Keitel's peers did not respect him. They only considered him a sycophant and a stupid follower of Hitler, as they often called him and frequently bypassed him, going directly to the Führer. Adolf Hitler did not value Keitel for his capabilities, but because he was as loyal as a dog, as the Führer once said. Hitler knew of Keitel's limited intellect and nervous disposition, but appreciated his diligence and obedience. World War II started on the 1st of September 1939, when Germany invaded Poland. Wilhelm Keitel was involved in the planning of the invasion and was fully aware of its criminal nature as mass arrests, population transfers, and mass murders had been planned long before. When the officer corps started to complain about the atrocities committed in Poland and other countries conquered by Nazi Germany, Keitel ignored them until the local commanders and their soldiers became morally numbed to the horrible events they were witnessing. After the invasion of Poland, Wilhelm Keitel received a bonus of 100,000 Reichsmarks for his loyalty. The German invasion of France, Belgium, Luxembourg and the Netherlands started on the 10th of May 1940 and became known as the Battle of France. These countries, along with France, were conquered within six weeks. In order to humiliate France, Hitler ordered the document of armistice to be signed in the same rail car in which the representatives of the then-defeated Germany signed the armistice at the end of the First World War. Hitler had this rail car removed from the museum where it had been stored 
and brought to Compagnie Forest, the same place where the 1918 armistice with Germany had been signed. In this manner, the location of Germany's 1918 humiliation became the symbolic site of the Third Reich's victory over France. The document was signed on the 22nd of June 1940 by General Keitel for Germany and General Hunziger for France. Shortly after, Wilhelm Keitel was promoted to the rank of Field Marshal. However, this did not change the way the high-ranking Nazis would look down on him and despise him. Hermann Göring, the head of the German Air Forces, the Luftwaffe, even said that Keitel had a sergeant's mind inside a field marshal's body. From April 1941, Keitel issued a series of criminal orders allowing the execution of Jews, civilians, and non-combatants for any reason. His guidelines stated that the soldiers on the Eastern Front had to use unusual severity to stamp out the resistance and the response to a loss of a German soldier was the execution of 50 to 100 communists. Keitel was also increasing pressure for a more ruthless reprisal policy in German-occupied territories and even authorized the killing of enemy special operations troops even when captured in uniform. He also drafted the Night of Fog decree that authorized the nighttime arrests and secret killings of suspected members of the resistance and signed orders authorizing reprisals against the families of Allied volunteers. However, Keitel was also affected by the war, as his sons were killed in the German attack on the Soviet Union, an attack that Keitel had helped to execute. In the summer of 1944, Wilhelm Keitel took part in the persecution of the conspirators who attempted to assassinate Adolf Hitler on the 20th of July 1944. After the bomb had exploded, he personally led the wounded Hitler out of the room. It was Keitel who on Hitler's order sent two generals to Erwin Rommel, a famous German field marshal known as the Desert Fox, whose participation in the assassination attempts remains ambiguous until today, offering him the choice of a court-martial or suicide. It was Wilhelm Keitel who on the 8th of May 1945 in Berlin signed the German Instrument of Surrender, which was the legal document that effected the unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany on all fronts and ended World War II in Europe. In the end, justice finally caught up with Keitel when he was arrested by the Allies and tried at the Nuremberg Trials, which were held against the representatives of the defeated Nazi Germany. He was convicted of conspiracy to commit crimes against peace, planning, initiating and waging wars of aggression, war crimes, and crimes against humanity. Keitel admitted that he knew that many of Hitler's orders were illegal, but kept insisting that he had only followed them when ordered, and it was all Hitler's responsibility. Regarding the atrocities, he said that they had developed one from the other step by step. And without any foreknowledge of the consequences, destiny took its tragic course with its fateful consequences. He even said he would suffer more agony of conscience and self-reproach in his cell than anyone would ever know. Prison psychiatrist G. M. Gilbert said that Keitel had no more backbone than a jellyfish. On the 1st of October 1946, the International Military Tribunal found Wilhelm Keitel guilty on all four counts and sentenced him to death by hanging. His request for a military execution by firing squad was denied due to the criminal rather than military nature of his acts. On the 16th of October 1946, the day of Keitel's execution, Keitel told the prison chaplain, You have helped me more than you know. Make Christ my saviour. Stand by me all the way. I shall need him so much. He then received communion and was executed later that day by an American Army Sergeant, John C. Woods, who had no documented pre-war experience as a hangman. It is believed that he was deliberately bad at his job to make the ten Nazi war criminals that he executed on that day suffer, as they all died a long, agonizing death. The Nazis executed by Sergeant Woods fell from the gallows with a drop insufficient to snap their necks, resulting in their death by strangulation that in some cases lasted several minutes. With Wilhelm Keitel, it was even worse. 
after he had said his last words, I call on God Almighty to have mercy on the German people. More than two million German soldiers went to their death for the fatherland before me. I follow now my sons, all for Germany. Keitel was hanged, but because the trapdoor was too small, it caused him painful head injuries, and as he fell from the gallows with insufficient force to snap his neck, his horrible convulsing lasted 28 long minutes before he died. He was 64 years old. After that, his corpse was cremated and scattered in the River Isar. There were no tears shed for Wilhelm Keitel. Thanks for watching the World History Channel and don't miss our next videos. Click the subscribe button now for more interesting clips. Give us a like and see you in the following episode.